Coming up on Bear News. Be careful out there. We'll tell you why your car is no longer safe and secure parked around campus. Chinese culture enriches the UNC community. We have the details on the prep for the upcoming Lunar New Year. New Year itself starts on the 10th of February, so coming up here. Greeley is a very diverse community, but we will tell you, what is Greeley known for? The Chiefs, 49ers, or Taylor Swift? The predictions and opinions are going viral, and we have some to share. I think Taylor is going to win. And I obviously think the best team in the NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs, are going to win the Super Bowl. How's it going? It's currently 11:10 right now, and outside the snow studio, experiencing a few snow flurries. But I'm gonna talk about your full forecast to come back inside just a bit. Bear news starts now. Good afternoon, Bears. Happy Friday. I'm your host Sophia Tavanello, and this is Bear News. This week we'll be covering past and upcoming UNC events, a Greeley deep dive, and a Super Bowl discussion. Let's get into it. Did you know that UNC is creating a College of Osteopathic Medicine? On Monday, the Dean of the Proposed College, Dr. Beth Longenecker, stopped by the Bear News studio to tell us why the college is needed. The American Association of Medical Colleges predicts that we'll be facing a shortage of over 250,000 physicians oh, nationwide wow. by 2030. Colorado already has a physician shortage, only meeting 36% of the state's physician needs. But helping Coloradoans comes with a price tag of about $200 million. So far, UNC has received over $31 million in funding and is working to obtain the $169 million still needed from the state. Despite the high cost of getting the school going, Lange Necker is enthusiastic about its future. She says she hopes that UNC will act as a leader in diversity, equity, and inclusion in the medical field. We are in a situation here at UNC where we have a wonderfully diverse undergraduate population, and if we can create programs that really are welcoming for the, those students, I'm hoping we can make a dent and actually see some increase in our Latinx physician population and in our underrepresented minority physicians. If everything goes to plan, UNC will receive its pre-accreditation and be able to start recruiting in 2025 and launch its first class in 2026. To find the full interview, head to the Bear News YouTube channel. On Wednesday night, our car was stolen from the parking lot of South of Campus Commons. The vehicle, a Hyundai, was recovered by police. Unfortunately, this is not the first attempt to head car theft this semester. On January 30th and 31st, UNC police received two reports of attempted motor vehicle thefts in Q lot by Toby Kendall Hall and I lot near North and South Hall. Both of those attempted thefts also involved Hyundai accents. The windows of the cars were found broken and the ignition switches were also broken. UNC police encourages students to use anti-theft devices like steering wheel locks, a brake locking system, wheel clamps, GPS tracking devices, or a hidden battery disconnect switch. Parking Services has steering wheel locks and pedal locks available for students to check out for free. If you encounter any suspicious activity, call UNC Police or text them through the Guardian app. Coming on the 13th, the College of Humanities and Social Sciences will be hosting the Honors Convocation. Each spring, the HSS looks to highlight the most accomplished and promising students from each program. Faculty members from each of the HSS departments select students to be recognized at the ceremony. Students will be presented with a certificate of accomplishment and will be celebrated among the attendees. The ceremony will be held in the Grand Ballroom in the University Center from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Refreshments will be provided. Have you ever wondered what Greeley's known for? Could it be its different selection of food or drinks? Or its historic downtown stores and buildings? You can find many events and art pieces in and around the city. The city prides itself on being known for campus light, art, and food. On the eastern side of Greeley, you can find murals painted on the sides of buildings throughout town. Greeley native Ethan Esperada Escobar had this to say regarding the future of Greeley. It's growing fast, it's gentrifying fast. I think it's going to blend into all the other towns uh, in between here and Loveland. I think it's just going to be one giant town. So the next time you decide to take a stroll through Greeley, be sure to explore what the city has to offer. Now we move to Sam with the weather. Take it away, Sam. Thanks, Sophia. Well, from snow flurries to this morning to now mostly cloudy skies as we take a current look across Greeley right now. Mostly cloudy skies across campus, currently 45 degrees, as 45 degrees is also our high right now, and the highs for the rest of northern Colorado are all around in the mid-40s. But we are expected to get a little storm system coming through tonight. We're going to look at what's happening across the United States right now. as this is our U.S. outlook. Snow mainly for the western United States. There's some thunderstorms 
down in the southeastern United States, but it's the slow pressure system I'm looking at right here as it's going to move into northern Colorado. Take a look at future cast radar as this storm moves in to tonight. This is a shot around 9 o'clock. Snow expected to hit Greeley, so by midnight tonight, we could expect to see around a half an inch of snow to maybe even an inch of snow for the Greeley area. But as you wake up tomorrow morning, tomorrow is going to be our big snow day for most of Colorado, actually. So morning lows are going to be down into the 20s, but our highs are also going to be in the 30s as Greeley's high tomorrow is looking to be 35 degrees. And as we take a look at future cast for Saturday, this is where mainly the snow will come for Colorado. Taking a wide shot here, as you can look at most of Colorado, what I'm tracking is a low pressure system down south of us in Arizona and New Mexico is gonna be pushing up snow uh, to the north of us, but we also have that low pressure system, as I said, from tonight bringing in the snow. So taking a closer look at everything, this snow track right here is what I'm tracking and it could bring us a lot of snow, but by Sunday, it should fizzle on out. So by Sunday morning for your Super Bowl, it should be nice and sunny. But taking a look at the US for Saturday, just to show you, most of Colorado is getting that snow. There's still thunderstorms down in the south, but it's that low pressure system that's gonna be moving through and sandwiching that snow for us. So how much snow are we gonna be getting? Down in Denver, expected four to eight inches of snow. For the Greeley area, I would expect three to six inches of snow. But taking a look at this band right here, this is that band where this practically smushing. I feel like it could be a little more widespread, so expect a few inches coming our way towards Greeley. But for the seven-day forecast, as I said, Saturday, I, I know, again, a Saturday snow. I wish it was on Monday so we could get it canceled, but sorry, don't hate the weather, man. Hate the weather. So Saturday, expect that snow. Definitely a few inches. Please be prepared, especially if you're traveling home or anywhere this weekend, especially for the Super Bowl. But it's going to stay cold on Sunday. Oh, temperatures only going to be 38. But getting into next week, that snow should start to melt on out and be looking pretty nice by the end of the week. We'll head back to the desk with Sophia. Thanks, Sam. Coming up after the break, we have sports reporter Nathan Kitchen with some UNC sports updates. We'll be right back. For decades, I've taught you everything I know. How to safely build a fire. How to control the flames. <laughs> what to do with hot coals. How to secure your chains. But I can only teach wildfire prevention. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hello everyone, <clears throat> I'm Nathan Kitchen. Welcome to Bear News Sports. Last night, the UNC women's basketball traveled to Montana State to take on the Bobcats. The Bears only scored 12 points in the first half. They went on to lose 40-61. to Redshirt junior Seneca Hackley led the scoring with 10 points. Freshman Tatum West followed with 9. Senior Delaney Byrne came in with 6. The Bears will travel to play Montana Saturday at 2 p.m. at Dahlberg Arena. Last night, the UNC men's basketball took on Montana State at home. The Bears started slow, shooting only 20% from the three-point line. Hope looked to have been lost for the team after the first half struggles. Once the second half began, the Bears were able to switch gears, coming back from being down 47 to 57. The last minute proved to be fireworks as both teams scored on every possession. A last-second Hail Mary from the Bobcats was intercepted by the Bears. Once the dust had settled, the clock struck zero for the team. The men pulled off a tough win with a final score of 73 to 70. Five players were in double scoring for the team. Reeves led the team DeJore Reeves led the team with 21 points off the bench. Senior Jaron Riley and junior St. Thomas followed with 12. Graduate student Riley Abercrombie and sophomore Brock Whisney came in with 11 points. The Bears will host Montana Saturday 2 p.m. at the Bank of Colorado Arena. That's it for sports this week, Bears. I'm Nathan Kitchen with Bear News Sports. 
Up next, we have reporter Drew Peters with a special UNC music update. Take it away, Drew. Thanks, Nathan. Ever heard of the ankle biters? I'm not talking about the small, annoying bugs that cover your ankles in little bite marks. I'm talking about a brand new music group launching right here at UNC. This week, I got the chance to check out one of their rehearsals. Bear News will be following up on this. Oh. While walking through Fraser Hall, it's no surprise to hear students playing instruments like the trumpet or violin. But what about a punk rock band shredding on electric guitar and banging on drums? Meet the Ankle Biters. It started as a joke, but then like uh, one day it just like wasn't a joke anymore. Um, and we were squeezer for a little while and like we sort of just, I think we picked up Hunter first and then you guys and um, it, it kind of happened like weirdly naturally for a Weezer cover band, but yeah. Initially starting out as a cover band for alternative rock group Weezer, they soon realized they wanted to play a way bigger variety of music. No, I think we all bring our own stylistic differences. We all like completely different music, but that's, that's the great thing about this band is we can all come in and bring in our own ideas, and every, every day it feels like someone has a fresh new take on whatever song we were just working on, and we constantly grow and evolve from there. While still continuing to mainly cover existing music, each Ankle Biters member adds their own style to make songs their own. Like everybody comes in with fresh ideas, you know, oh, let's try it, and then... You know, it ends up being super cool, and it's like a cover with a with a nice twist, little, an ankle biter's twist. twist. And... Blending styles and playing off each other not only makes for better music, but also pushes them to become better musicians themselves. Being back in a rock band has very much been like a really needed reminder to me of like why I started doing music in the first place and what I really love about it. So, even with insanely busy schedules and prior musical obligations. Each bandmate still finds time for the ankle biters. Here at school, there's a lot of boxes they put you in. You have a lot of guidelines that are super strict and you have to follow them, but the ankle biters has been a real outlet to be able to like let go of all that and keep loving music and do what I want to do. From what it seems, the ankle biters are here to stay. Bear News will be following up on this story in the coming weeks. UNC's Chinese Cultural Club held an event to teach members how to make traditional Chinese crafts in preparation for the Lunar New Year. Reporter Carmen Machuca went to check out the event and had a chat with the club's president. The Chinese Culture Club held an event where the members learned how to make traditional Chinese crafts in preparation for the Lunar New Year and the Lantern Festival. While drinking tea and eating snacks like Pocky, members sat together to learn paper folding or also known as origami. So, what do the traditional New Year crafts represent? So like one of the ones that we um, learned how to do last week was one that uh, is the character for spring. And then what they will do is they'll like put them up uh, like really sometimes outside the house, sometimes inside the house as decor. And then they fall off and like kind of disintegrate or whatever on its own. And it's kind of like this way to welcome in the New Year. And when is the Lunar New Year and the Lantern Festival? So Lunar Year, New Year itself starts on the 10th of February, so coming up here. Um, and so the 9th, is, which is kind of like New Year's Eve or whatever for, for the Lunar Year, uh, is when we're doing the dumplings, which is like a like tradition in China, of course. And then it ends with the Lantern Festival, and then people will like sometimes decorate their own lanterns, and they'll set them up, and it's just a really great way to bring in the New Year. The club holds other events, such as Chinese Club Study Nights and Chinese Board Game Nights. The Chinese Culture Club meets every Friday at 3 p.m. at the Cole House. For Bear News, I'm Carmen Machuca. Thanks, Carmen. The, new, the Lunar New Year begins this Saturday, which marks the Year of the Wood Dragon. I'm reporter Drew Peters. Back to you, Sophia. Thanks, Drew. Have you ever thought about what it's like to be an international student? Reporter Tatiana Williams took a trip to see the ins and outs of global engagement here at UNC. Take a look. When international students come to study at UNC, transferring to a new school in a new country can be tough to navigate. UNC Global Engagement has coordinated various events throughout this semester to help these students make friends and experience Northern Colorado. They get to campus and they don't have the opportunities that our domestic students have to have parents or friends or caregivers take them to the store and get the extra essentials. Events like shopping trips to Target help international students experience what life in America looks like. 
The cooking classes help bring the community together and get students to experience new culture. Nu Serrano, an international student from Spain studying advertisement, had this to say about the impact of the shopping trips. It's such a good uh, thing that the OGE does that because since we don't have cars, any of us international students, obviously, it's very helpful that they take us grocery shop shopping. The Office of Global Engagement helps build connections between UNC and the world by bringing in global perspectives to help enrich our campus community. They have various events the rest of the semester that you can still attend, like cookie decorating on February 12th, or a Denver shopping trip to HMAR on February 24th. Join the Office of Global Engagement as they help these students feel more at home. From Bear News, this is Tatiana Williams. Thanks, Tatiana. For more information on global engagement, visit their website on the UNC homepage. Get ready, NFL fans and Swifties. This year's Super Bowl is right around the corner, kicking off this Sunday afternoon. With a halftime performance by Usher and a more than likely appearance by Taylor Swift, fans are more than ready to cheer on the two contenders. This week, Bear News reached out to our very own faculty here at UNC to get their predictions and opinions on the matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. Take a look. Super Bowl prediction, Chiefs are going to win 27-21. Why? Pretty simple. Patrick Mahomes. Uh, my Super Bowl prediction is that Usher is going to fall off the stage. I think Taylor is going to win in our hearts. I think the one, the one who will win at the Super Bowl will be Capitalist. <laughs> and I obviously think the best team in the NFL, the Kansas City Chiefs, are going to win the Super Bowl yet again. I'm going to add a bonus that probably Taylor Swift will be there too, but I think they're going to blow it out of the water. Personally, I'm just watching for the halftime performance and commercials, but yeah, football. That's it for this week, Bears. I'm your host, Sophia Tavanello. Have a super weekend, and we'll see you next time.